Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the River Jordan proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Good morning. Welcome to St. Paul's and into this community of the beloved ones. We want to know each other's names here. We are baptized into the name of Jesus, and our name carries the dignity of our individuality and yet our corporate inclusion into the body of Christ. I'm going to trust that the Holy Spirit will spread the names of this community to all of us, so I invite you to say that at this point, your name, and let us get to know you. My name is Brad Tobin. I'm the rector here at St. Paul's. It's a pleasure to have you joining us on this feast of the baptism of the Lord. We hear today's gospel for the third time throughout this Advent and Christmas season. And while the message of Christmas is no less important, today is the height of the summary of what that message is that God seeing Jesus come out of that water, that water of death and resurrection in the Jordan, names him his son. We are the beloved of God also. May God's spirit come upon us to call us by name and to follow in Jesus' baptismal ministry. Let us open ourselves to God's holy word. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions 
and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about 12 of them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him 
and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the tongue of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, with you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Here we are, past the 12 days of Christmas. One may feel the holidays are over for a while, but I suggest we should observe another major holiday, the baptism of our Lord. After all, only Matthew and Luke record anything about Jesus' birth, but all four Gospels, Acts, and Romans report his baptism. In fact, I understand in centuries past, the ch Church did celebrate this day even more than the days remembering the Holy Birth, but we have drifted away from the practice. Jesus' baptism ushered in a new baptism. Christian baptism became not just washing away of sin, but the baptism that brings the power of the Holy Spirit and a special relationship with God. Why? For no reason other than God chooses to do it, because God loves us unconditionally. Today's Gospel reading is one of the few places in the New Testament where there is a clear reference to the Trinity. When Jesus is baptized, the Spirit descends upon him like a dove, and the Father speaks from the heavens. You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The only time in the entire Bible that God's Spirit is identified with the dove is at this time, the baptism of Jesus. Yet, for 2,000 plus years, the descending dove has been the church's most widely used symbol of God's Holy Spirit. That tells us something about the importance of its appearance at Jesus' baptism. God says the same thing at our own baptism that he said at Jesus'. You and me, we are God's sons or daughters with whom he is well pleased. He says this before we prove ourselves worthy of his love. It is clear we do not earn God's love by our actions. He loves us unconditionally. You may be surprised to hear that the first baptism I ever attended was about 20 plus years ago, soon after I joined the Episcopal Church. It was on an Easter Sunday. I witnessed a baptism that changed my understanding and significance of this sacrament. Having grown up in Eastern Europe during a communist regime, as many of you know, I never had the chance to witness a baptism. I was baptized in the Roman Catholic Church as an infant, pretty much in secret. In those days, baptisms, even if they happened, they happened in private, not associated with mass and parishioners in attendance. Given this history, you may understand why attending a baptism in a packed church made such an impression on me. 
That was the first time I truly understood what baptism really meant as being part of the body of Christ and that all of us are God's beloved children. I want to read a portion of a meditation of Henry Nouwen who writes about baptism, and I quote, When Jesus was baptized in the Jordan, he heard the voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. I know now that the words spoken to Jesus when he was baptized are words spoken also to me and to all who are brothers and sisters of Jesus. My tendencies towards self-rejection and self-deprecation make it hard to hear these words truly and let them descend into the center of my heart. But once I have received these words fully, I am set free from my compulsion to prove myself to the world and can live in it without belonging to it. Once I have accepted the truth that I am God's beloved child, unconditionally loved, I can be sent into the world to speak and to act as Jesus did." End of quote. The first half of the message of Jesus' baptism and our own is, we are loved by God. But there is another half, and that is, we have work to do. Remember, this happened at the start of Jesus' ministry. This was his commissioning. Now, 2,000 plus years later, when someone is baptized in the church, whether as an infant or as an adult, it is no different. There is the affirmation of God's incredible and unconditional love and the commissioning to service in the name of Jesus Christ. That is why we take so seriously the promises the new, that new disciples or their parents make on their behalf. To live the Christian faith, to teach that faith to children. We even ask the congregation, will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? And the congregation responds with a resounding, we will. Baptism is a call to discipleship, but what exactly is discipleship? Discipleship may be defined in many ways, but three principal aspects are crucial. To be a disciple first means to be a follower. Through baptism, we become, become followers of Jesus. Baptism next calls us to ministry, the work of a disciple. Lastly, discipleship requires that we become evangelists in response to Jesus' command to go and make disciples of all nations. Discipleship requires us to minister to God's people. The tendency for many Christians is to think that only certain people are called to ministry, that one must have a vocation for such work, such as clergy. All of us, however, are called to ministry and work in the vineyard of the Lord. As Jesus states in Luke, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. We are all workers. We are all the body of Christ. Now, new disciples have work to do, and they will need all the help they can get, and they need the congregation's unwavering support. It is no easy task to bring forth justice in the world or to work for an end to human suffering or to bring peace where there is hatred and discord. And yet, that is the mission which is laid upon every person who is washed in the waters of baptism. 
Justice does not happen spontaneously. It requires relentless work. Peace is elusive when the conflict of human wills are involved. Human suffering is easier to ignore because of its painfulness. But those are the arenas of life to which Jesus was sent. And because of our baptism, those are the arenas of life to which we are sent to do something about them. We are to bring about healing, reconciliation, and change. We are to bring an end to injustice and oppression. We are to care for the hungry and the homeless. We are to work to make peace a reality. God is not asking us to do the impossible. We are not all called to be Mother Teresa's or John Lewis's or Martin Luther King's. But each one of us has received unique gifts from God which we need to put to use to live a life worthy of a true follower of Jesus. If everyone would put their God-given gifts to use for the common good, we would live in a much better world. Paraphrasing Mother Teresa, we are not called to do great things, but we are called to do small things with great love. All those small things done with great love can change the world around us little by little. Are we up for that task as followers of Jesus? Are we committed to our calling? That is the question to every one of us. I would like to close with a Franciscan blessing. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that you may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer pain, rejection, hunger, and war so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and to turn their pain to joy. And may God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in the world so that you can do what others claim cannot be done, to bring justice and kindness to all our children and the poor. Amen. Let us profess our baptismal faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he has worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people, form two found on page 385. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our interim bishop, 
for this gathering and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially for all those who died this past year. We pray for those who died of COVID-19 in this country and throughout the world. Pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers for those all those who are ill and hospitalized and for their families. I ask your thanksgiving for this parish and parishioners of St. Paul's. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored and those whom we remember today. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. In the words our Savior hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. He is the way. Follow him through the land of unlikeness. You will see rare beasts and have unique adventures. He is the truth. Seek him in the kingdom of anxiety. You will come to a great city that has expected your return for years. He is the life. Love him in the world of the flesh and at your marriage all its occasions shall dance for joy. And the blessing of God Almighty, Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier be upon you this day and remain with you always.